This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Up Calvary's mountain, one dreadful morn, walk Christ my Savior. had a great week. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father. He's my comfort when I'm weary. He's my shelter from the storm. He's my armor when in battle in the cold. He keeps me warm. When I'm hungry, He's the man I Sent from heaven to feed my soul When I'm lonely, he's a real companion He goes with me everywhere I go 
He's my comfort when I'm weary. He's my shelter from the storm. He's my armor when in battle. In the cold, he keeps me warm. Soon he's coming in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. At his coming. My redemption is drawing nigh. He's my comfort when I'm weary. He's my shelter from the storm. He's my armor when in battle. In the cold, he keeps me warm. He's my comfort when I'm weary. He's my shelter from the storm. He's my armor when in battle. In the cold, he keeps me warm. In the cold, he keeps me warm. Two roughly hewn old timbers lay obscured by weeds now grown to where the common passerby might never even know that this old tree once held a king who wore a thorny crown for God's own Son's great work was done After the cross came down The cross came down But the Lord lives on Wood and nails could not prevail on resurrection's dawn That rugged tree is a memory But His blood redeems right now Praise God, His grace still saves today After the cross came down No great museum will display the cross where Jesus died. For things of earth shall pass away, yet His love will abide. He reached through time and met my need when His blood touched Calvary's ground. Then Christ arose within my soul after the cross came down. The cross came down, but the Lord lives on. Wood and nail could not prevail on resurrection dawn. That rugged tree is a memory, but His blood redeems right now. Praise God, His grace still saves today. After the cross came down That rugged tree is a memory But His blood redeems right now Praise God, His grace still saves today After the cross 
came down. Now, if you would take your Bible and turn to Psalm uh, chapter 20, verse 7. Um, for any of you that are preachers or Sunday school teachers or anything like that, um, sometimes you wake up 3, 4 o'clock in the morning and you have a thought on your mind. And then again, it may not have anything to do with preaching. You just wake up, you got thoughts on your mind, and you can't go back to sleep and you think, oh, that's something I need to get done or to do. And what do you do? You go back to sleep and you wake up in the morning. Now, what was that that I was thinking about? Uh, it came and it went. But as a preacher, I've learned this. Uh, when the Lord wakes me up at 4 o'clock in the morning and begins to speak to me about some things, I've got notepads right beside my bed. And I get up, turn the light on, and write a note or at least an outline of it so that I remember. So the outline of this sermon was one of those four o'clock sermons that God gave me. And the uh, thing we're going to talk about today is remember, consider, and surrender. That was the outline, and I got up and wrote that down. And then the next day I sat at my computer and began developing uh, the sermon. So I hope this will be a blessing to you. Uh, we're looking at Psalm uh, chapter 20, verse 7. We're starting with some things that we need to remember. Um, I'm 76 years old, going on 77 in April. Memory has been fading for a long time. Names come back even pastors that I've known for years and years. Uh, I've got to look at my schedule or look at my directory. And I can picture, I can picture where the church is and sometimes, but the names just don't come back to me. And that's not the only thing, numerous things. Um, sometimes I can talk about something in living room and walk to the office to get it done. And then I'm thinking, what did I come in here for? Am I coming or going? Okay, a lot of you have heard jokes about that. Uh, it becomes a reality, let me tell you. So this is something that I sat down and began developing and putting together. But I want to talk to you to begin with some things that we need to remember. Uh, beginning with Psalm 20, verse 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. We will remember the name of the Lord our God. We must remember his name. Our faith and trust and confidence must be in God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is as much God as God is. The Holy Spirit is as much God as Jesus and God the Father. Some trust in chariots and horses. That's a picture of modern America right now. Man, I've got a house, I've got a car, I've got a job, I've got money in my pocketbook, I've got groceries, and I, I, I'm wanting for nothing. Well, you're wanting for something. And if you've never been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, you're wanting for something that's going to haunt you for eternity if you don't do something about it. Uh, if you do not get saved while you're mentally alert and capable to make that decision on your own, you may die and split hell wide open. So let's remember God. God created this world. God created man. And we need to realize for those of us that have uh, trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, we're safe in the hands of God. Amen? So we remember His name. Next thing, we remember His works and His wonders. Psalm 77, 11. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember the wonders of old. 
you first need to know God and the things of God, that He is the creator of this universe, He is the sustainer of this universe, He is the provider of this universe, and we as His dear children are apples in the, um, how does the saying go, uh, apple of His eye. We are, you are, if you're saved today, you're the apple of the eye of God. And He loves you, and He loves me, and He wants our love and attention. That's why little children come up and grab your leg, and they want to hug you and love you and tell you all those precious things. And, and you love that. Now, you get to be teenagers, they're not quite so affectionate. But the reason being is so many things of the world come between them and that love. And the same thing is true with me and you today. Things come between us and our love for God. Do not forget them. I will remember the wonders of old. I love old time things. Uh, since my wife died, we got a coffee table about this long and about that wide. It sits right in front of the double window in my living room. I have put my recliner right there beside it, and that's where I live day and night when I'm home. But on top of that, I've got old things that remind me where I came from and where I'm going. I've got my wife's picture there. I've got her parents' picture there. I've got my parents' picture there. I've got my grandmother and grandfather's picture there. I've got my grandmother's mother and father picture there. I've got my great-grandma's mother and father picture there. My great-great-grandfather was in a Civil War uniform. I hope they were all saved. I know a lot of them along the way were saved and loved God and served God. But I look forward to meeting them in heaven. But I look back at the old things I can remember that reminds me where I came from and the responsibility I've got to carry on. I will remember the works of the Lord. I will remember thy wonders. Um, Here's something very important. Number three, we would need, need to remember God and His house. Psalm 42, 4. When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God. Now in this day and age, the multitudes are not coming to God's house. The multitudes are out on the ballpark or out in the ball stadium Sunday watching a football game. I haven't watched a football game completely, hardly at all, in the last three or four years. And you know what? I don't miss it. I hardly even look at the sports page anymore. And I'm getting at the point where I look and see my team loses. I say, thank God they lost. Because the more they lose, the less I'm concerned about them. IU got shut out yesterday by Penn State. And I said, hallelujah. Because I don't care anymore. All of that is superficial. But the house of God, very important. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of my joy and praise with a multitude that kept holy day. Go to church. And when you go to church, stay in church. And when you're staying in church, bring others to church. That's what it's all about. By the foolishness of preaching, God chose to save some. And some of us, that's how we got saved, through the preaching of God's Word. All of us got saved through God's Word or you're not saved. If you think you have uh, rehabilitated your life enough to get to heaven, you'll split hell wide open. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from all sin. And that's it. But once we get saved, we need to go to church. 
and stay in church. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, it's so valuable to your spiritual life. Stop and think about this. If the Lord would come back on a Sunday night or a Wednesday night, and you were in church on Sunday morning, and He saw you sitting at home watching a ball game, or visiting neighbors, or whatever, Say, why couldn't you come back? Didn't you love me enough to come back and fellowship with other believers and to hear the preaching of God's Word? Listen, it's valuable. Don't miss it. Next thing, remember God's goodness. Psalm 77, 10. And I said, this is my infirmity but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. You know, Pastor Larry and I, we're both getting older. Are you older than me or younger? I'm 76. We're getting up there. And we're getting old. And maybe some infirmities are coming. My wife went through them for years before she died. But you know what? No matter how infirm, no matter how feeble, no matter what happens to this body, I'm safe in the hands of God. And I remember the right hand of the Most High that has me, that leads me, that protects me. And God provides for me. I I could preach for two hours now on how God provides for my needs. Thank God for it. I don't want to forget it. Remember all his past. Psalm 143, 5. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the works of thy hands. Think back about God. I've got a message I preach. What will heaven be like? Think about this when we get to heaven. Uh, A lot of things in the Bible that have not really clarified themselves to you or, or you wonder about some real cherished things that you know. Uh, I, I, I like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. I know Nebuchadnezzar looked in there and who did he see? The three of them and the other as the Son of God. Um, if you think about heaven... You know, the VCR, forward, reverse, stop, all that. Heaven's much better than that. And I would like to rewind my life back maybe even before I was born and see my heritage. My son and my daughter have done some things like that up in Groton, Connecticut. The very first Baptist church that was ever established in Groton, Connecticut by Valentine Whitman, the pastor. The property that the church was built on was given by a man named Stark. He is a relative on my wife's side of the family and on my side. Back six generations, they come together. And they uh, are my relatives. They came from England and they were early American Baptists and started the very first Baptist church in Groton, Connecticut. I'd like to look back and see that. Amen. I want to remember the old things. So much of us have things on the few. What's my next car going to be? What's this going to be? Uh, so it's all temporal. No matter what it is, if you won the $653 million, billion, trillion dollar lottery, it's all going to be left behind. Only what's done for Christ will last. So those are things to remember. Secondly, let's look at some things to consider. Philippians 4.8 is a good verse to kick this off. <clears throat> Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, 
whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Think means to consider. Consider all these things that God has done. Now the problem, people don't want to because this takes hard work and time. You've got to spend some time in this Bible before you even begin to understand the work of God. Oh, salvation can come just like that. But God's got so much more for us than being saved. What about that parent that works their heart off to raise that child, to train them, provide for them, get an education so that they can go out and be a good parent to the grandchildren that come up. Think about these things. That's hard work you put in, not necessarily for yourself, but for others. That's why worthless men will not work. My Bible says if a man will not work, he shouldn't eat. Amen? Amen. Now welfare is good when it's helping. But when it's providing an out from work, it's just not good. Knowing God and knowing His Word and really taking it in, it's hard work. It's got to be consistent. You know, how many of you today will go home, oh, you got a Bible with you and you carry it in your arm, but you go home, put it on a shelf, and that's the last time you look at it until next Sunday morning. That's not right. This ought to be the first thing you start your morning off on, on God's Word. I don't say you have to read five or ten chapters, but boy, get something that will let the Holy Spirit Mature you to grow up and to stay close to God. So there are some things we're to consider. Psalm 83, 1. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. Well, I can't sing, but that song, I stand amazed in the presence of God. We ought to be amazed every day that God even gives us the breath to get up and get going. He's been so good to us in America. Too good. We haven't had to struggle like our forefathers did. I've studied a lot of Baptist history in the last four or five years that I've been at home and not traveling as much. I'm telling you, God needs to take us back, not take us forward. When I see what they went through, do you realize that when the preachers came out of the Georgia, southeastern area, up into the Kentucky and Tennessee and those areas, do you know what they went through to spread the gospel westward? They traveled in snow up to their waist. No horse walking. They would have to cross over little, not rivers, but streams. And they would walk across and the ice would break and they would just keep going. And as they were traveling westward, they slept out in the snow under trees so they could spread the gospel westward. And that's why when you go down what they call the Bible Belt, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, and that area, that's where all these guys came. Daniel Boone's brother, Squire Boone, was a Baptist preacher. He was one of them. How many of us won't even get up and walk across the street and knock on the door of a neighbor? God help us to get back. I want to look back at those old things and I want to consider it. Next thing, Psalm 50, 22. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver you. If you're here today and you're not saved 
and you're not sure that your sins are under the blood of Jesus Christ, don't ever look at God and blame Him because today is the day of salvation. God died for you. God shed His blood for you, for me, so that we could have forgiveness of sins. Hell is real, but not to be chosen. I don't want to go to hell. But if you're here today and you're not saved, that's what you've chosen for your eternal destiny. Don't point a finger at God. Don't point a finger at me. Don't point a finger at any church member here. Because every week and probably every message you hear from this pulpit explicitly tells you how to be saved and how to know that you're going to heaven. And if you have any concern at all, someone will go one on one and explain verse by verse how to be saved and how to have the confidence that Jesus Christ lives in your heart and life. Now for the child of God, consider this. Psalm 119, 159. Consider how I love thy precepts, the psalmist said. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy loving kindness. Have a love for God's word. I cannot overemphasize. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. The entrance of thy word giveth wisdom. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. That means it's a lamp around me so I can see and not bump and, and I know what's going on, but it's a light unto my pathway. When I start walking out of this area, I can see where I'm going. I can see the dangers. I can see the hand of God leading me. Have a love for God and His Word. Psalm 6, 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. <clears throat> Consider her ways and be wise. I mentioned this just a moment ago. If a man won't work, he shouldn't eat. Husbands, it's your responsibility to provide for your family. What's wrong in America? I've got a sermon on that too. And one of them is the industrialization of America. Because when America become industrialized, what happened? Big cities. Breakdown of the home and the family. Separated and nobody watching over you now. Okay? Started men coming in and doing it. But then, what, during the wars... Um, Rosie the Riveter, you heard that term before. All the women had to come out and do the men's work because all the men were off in war. But after the war was over, the women didn't go back home. They stayed out. They got their hands and they said, hey, we want a part of it. Their dress changed. Their activities changed. Their attitude changed. And look where we're at today. Ecclesiastes 7.13 <clears throat> Consider the work of God. For who can make that straight which he hath made crooked? God's in charge of this universe and global warming is not going to change the hand of God. I'm not saying global warming is 100% wrong, but it's become a political movement that has no place in God's Word. God's still in control of me. And I don't worry whether I have pure air or whatever. I'm going to live till God's ready for me. And I don't fret over what the alternative is. Amen. Ecclesiastes 7.14 in the day of prosperity, be joyful. But in the day of adversity, consider. God also hath set the one over against the other to the end that man should find nothing after him. Even in adversity, God is good. Usually when you're going through the pits of hell in your life is when God becomes more real 
and more precious and more uh, just available to you. He's always available, but you avail yourself of Him. Study the life of Paul and the apostles. <laughs> Adversity, we don't know what it's like. I just told you about the ones in early America, all the way back uh, out of the tw uh, apostles. All of them except the uh, apostle John were martyred, beheaded. Paul was beheaded. Peter was hung on a cross upside down because he said, I am not worthy to die the death that my Savior died. And others were burned at the stake or whatever it was. Some were uh, pulled apart by horses and things. All for the cause of Christ. Do you think any one of them would want to come back and pray for a much easier life than what they already had? Than what they had? I don't think they would. The next thing, surrender. Remember, consider, and surrender. Acts 5.29 Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. In this day and age, we ought to obey God rather than man. Church is not an essential. Church is an essential. It's God's essential. And thank God you're open and having church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. In Indiana, I know we've had it much easier than many other states. But in our church back home, all during the height of that COVID when all this garbage was going on, we closed our church doors for about two or three weeks. And even during that time, we still had live preaching. Our pastor set up on the uh, steps of our church. We have a little uh, low power uh, FM uh, thing. And it's good for about up to a month. So our people come in and park in church. Do you know what they did? <laughs> They parked a car length apart from each other, had empty spaces in between the cars. We wanted to be obedient to the government and obey the six-foot rule, but we never gave up that personal contact. Oh, maybe for a week, I don't know. But whatever, it was not very long. And within just a very few weeks after that, we started back. We run five buses. They've been running every Sunday since then. We've had vacation Bible school. We've had our revivals. We've had our spatial events. Just like nothing ever happened. And nobody come down on us. Had they come down on us, I think some of us would probably be in jail now if it come to that. Because we ought to obey God rather than man. And he said, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And if the government comes along to something that's going to de deter that, they're wrong. They're absolutely wrong. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Look at 1 Samuel 13, 22. You can look at it later. But it said, obedience is better than sacrifice. Acts 5, 32. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. The more you obey God, the more of the Holy Spirit controls you. You don't get more of the Holy Spirit. You get 100% of him the very instant you get saved. The question is not how much of the Spirit do I have, but it's how much of me does the Holy Spirit have. And the more of me He has, the more we're going to be in tune with Him and with God. Give your life fully over to the cause of Christ. Romans 6.12 Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it and the lust thereof. Obedience is important because that which you obey determines what you're going to do. Think about this. One 
little sin leads to another. And if you don't put a stop to it before long, instead of coming to church, you're going to be going to the bar. You're going to be going to the beer parties. And much worse than even that. And one day you're going to wake up. If you were really saved, and you can backslide far enough to do that and disobey God long enough, He'll give you over to it and you'll say, Oh my God, how did I get here? God, help me. That means you just came to your senses and realized that God is the one that can help you. Galatians 3.1 O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth crucified among you. Beware of false prophets, false doctrines, false cults. There's a lot in America right now that is portraying itself to be streamlined America Christian. That's as far from it as can be. Galatians 5, 7. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Be careful who you choose as friends. Teenagers, young adults, those of us that are older, we've sort of learned this lesson, I hope. But be careful who you run around with, whether it be at work, at school, even blood relatives. If they don't love Christ, they can be a detriment to your spiritual well-being. Just be aware of where you are and what you're doing and let God, the Holy Spirit, take control of your heart and life so that He can be in control instead of you. Hebrews 13, 7. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. They that have the rule over you it's talking specifically about the church having rule over its members. But think about this. Children, obey your parents. Workers, obey your boss and the owner of your business. You're not a part of that business to teach the owner how to do it or to tell your boss how the job's to be done. I've got a neighbor that lived across the street from me. He's been through about five jobs finally started working for himself because that was the only way he could be satisfied. He didn't want to go in and work under orders. And you know what? His son is the same way. And on drugs and got three illegitimate kids running around right now. Both of them I led to the Lord. Neither one of them has an ounce of spirituality showing in their lives. Are they saved? I don't know. They prayed the prayer. They sought Christ. But I don't know. Students, obey your teachers. As long as it doesn't go contrary to the Bible and God's Word. This new thing coming out, the CRT, critical race theory, boy, that's going to be a hellacious thing to, to come up. They're teaching kids perversion, sexuality, sexual change stuff. Teaching us that white people are evil because you're white. Baloney. We're evil because we're sinners. And need to be saved. Listen, in our white churches that I go to, there's more love for black people in here than out in the world, I'll guarantee it. 
And when we support missionaries, we don't ask, are you going to white or black or blue or yellow or green or whatever? They're going out to reach souls for Jesus Christ. Husbands and wives obey each other. You're in this jointly. One of you is not. Husband's to be the head of the home. That doesn't mean you're to be there to knock your wife in the head. It means that you strive together, being led by the Holy Spirit of God to have a good home. Members in the church, be obedient to your church rules and church standards. If you have any questions, come and ask a pastor, what's right about this? What's wrong about this? How should I think about this? Man, if every church member would do that and straighten their lives up, what a powerful church we would have for the cause of Christ. So now, remember God, consider His Word, and surrender your life to do His will. If you're here today and you've never been saved, if you're not 100% sure that you're on your way to heaven today, you need to come forward during an invitation. I'll be down here in front or pastor will be here. Someone to meet you and someone will take the Bible, God's Word, and show you step by step what you need to do to be saved and have that assurance of salvation. Uh, <clears throat> when I was 21 years old, I had prayed the sinner's prayer a hundred thousand times, and I believed it, I meant it. But I didn't know that was all that had to be done. And nobody taught me. And I went back out with the wrong crowd. I was a sailor. I smoked. I drank. I cursed like a sailor. A month before I got out of the Navy, pastor came to my house. We invited him. My wife was a Christian. Our daughter had been born. She was under conviction. That night, she rededicated her life to the Lord. And then he looked at me and took me through the plan of salvation. And I, wanted, I always wanted to be saved. I just couldn't get there. But he showed me that night. But more than that, he took me to 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. These things have rewritten unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know, K-N-O-W. That word is in 1 John 27 times in five chapters. Things that you can know, that ye can know that ye have eternal life. And I'm telling you, that night, November, Tuesday night, 1966, my life went like this. From Tuesday night to Wednesday morning, I went back to my ship. I didn't curse. I didn't drink anymore. It took me 15 months to quit smoking. When I heard the other guys on the ship take God's name in vain, it pricked my heart. What was the difference? The Holy Spirit took control. And I was now what I should be. Perfect? No. Perfect now? No. Saved? Hallelujah. Yes. I know that I'm saved. And you can have that same knowledge if you would come. Heavenly Father. I'll stay in the